Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, how have you been? How, how is work and, and everything going? How are you keeping safe during the with all that is going on? Oh, wow. Well, I, I think like many people, it's, uh, it's learning uh, the, the new definition of flexibility. I thought I had an understanding and now that COVID's hit, you're having to be flexible in every single situation, every single day. Um, there's, there's been a lot of change. There's a lot of decisions that have to be make, made and uh, it, it definitely is tiring. I think that that's a common theme amongst not only my constituents, but my family members and certainly myself. That is, that, that's amazing. How have you been? I've been good. Thank God. Keeping safe in this, making sure that I don't have any reason to go out except to go shopping for grocery. Grocery shopping, not like shopping, shopping. <laughs> so my my most trips are from here to superstore and then back to my back to my house. And we we need to do that to keep ourselves safe and also for the people for other members of the community who are also vulnerable to, to the COVID-19. As, as we all know, COVID-19 has no respect for anybody. It's not going to say because you are young or because you are old. It's, it's everywhere, right? So we have to protect ourselves and also the people that are around us. And that, that's what I'm trying to do to the best of my abilities. And, and, and yeah. So, Excellent. So thank you so much for taking time to, to meet with me. And um, I'll be asking four questions, and then, um, but you can go on um, as much as, as you want. Right? So the first question would be an introduction. So be, who are you? Oh, okay. That, that should be an easy question, right? So uh, you, you want me to just do the basics of, I'm Sarah Guillemard, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm currently, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm currently in, in the role of, of uh, Minister of Conservation and Climate, um, but I would say that my, my greatest title has always been mom to four beautiful children. Mm -hmm. I have two sons and two daughters. And um, yeah, I, I, I think that there's, there's been a lot of uh, different paths I've taken in, in life to, to end up where I am today. And, and each one of them has been a growth opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this this role is no less. Uh, that's that's so cool. I like that the, you you um, your most well, the most constant one is that you're you're the mom because that's some that's a role that um, no matter where we find ourselves, you can't you can't take away from you. Nobody can take that away from you. Once a mom is always a mom, basically. <laughs> 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 and so my follow-up question would be, where did you start your political, where or how or when did you start your political career? Oh my goodness. I hope you have time for a long story. Yes, um, yes, yes please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so certainly politics is not part of, uh, you know, my upbringing or my family. Uh, there, there's no politicians that I'm aware of that I'm related to. Um, my focus has always been, uh, again, um, more, more on that motherhood role. So it is one of the things that I wanted to be growing up is just a mother. And it was the role that I enjoyed most and still enjoy to this day. Um, but being a, a mother to four children and, and being at home to, to raise them afforded me the opportunities to volunteer within the community. So I would volunteer in the, in the school, on the parent councils. I volunteered as a coach in the sporting uh, community. And I was able and had opportunities then to work on local projects, which uh, interestingly enough, really did focus on environmental projects um, where we would collect the rainwater and, and runoff water, clean it with bile swales. So we built these bile swales on school grounds and clean the water before it got back into the water system. And then eventually it, Lake Winnipeg, uh, none of those initiatives uh, was me being driven towards a certain goal. It was just the opportunities that arose uh, along my uh, path of volunteering and trying to be helpful in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've lived in, the, in Fort Richmond since I was five years old. So my family moved wow, here from Saskatchewan. 
So when you when you live here and you have friends here and, and you get to know their parents and a lot of Fort Richmond families actually have stayed in the same homes as they were when I was growing up too. So um, you make a lot of connections. And then of course, volunteering, you meet all kinds of families and, and, and people who live within the community. And certainly through coaching and sports, uh, another opportunity to connect and, and really get to know people. So um, I had worked in, a, 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 the story kind of involves other uh, new politicians as well. Yes, um, yes. There was an opportunity that, uh, City Councilor Janice Lukes had to run for city councilor. So she was encouraged to run. And, and I had worked with her on a parent council in the area. And I knew that she was such a hard worker, uh, really got things done. Um, and really, I enjoyed uh, working alongside her. So I offered to volunteer, dropping off flyers, door knocking, and telling everyone how great she is. <laughs> and it. she ended up, yeah, so she ended up with some success. Uh, so she was uh, elected and I told her I would volunteer anytime for her because I knew that she had great work ethic and she really cared about the community. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, a year later, uh, the, the provincial uh, PC party was looking for candidates within the area. Yeah. And uh, because of Janice Lute's role in the city government, she had connections at, at other levels as well. And I guess she had kind of dropped my name at one point as being somebody who was connected in, in the neighborhood who she thought would, uh, would make a good representative or advocate for the area. So uh, of course she, she, she mentioned my name without my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was approached, when I was approached uh, by the party uh, and, and wondering if I would uh, run, I spent uh, a good portion of that discussion convincing them why I'm not a politician and they should really look for someone a little more qualified than myself. Um, and lo little did I know that by, by approaching it that way, trying to convince them that I'm just not the person they're looking for, it made them more determined to really pursue me as a candidate. Um, yes, it, it doesn't matter what you kind of push out there. It's, it, it sometimes has an, an opposite reaction. Um, but I do remember one comment uh, after the end of my, my list of reasons why I shouldn't be a, um, considered for this role. And the response was that they weren't looking for politicians. They were looking for people. And that stuck with me because I thought, well, you know, I definitely qualify as a person. Um, <laughs> and what I don't know, I could probably learn. So what I was advised to do was talk to family, talk to friends. Uh, before giving a definitive answer, because obviously at the time I was saying no, no. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, um, after speaking to my parents and my husband and, and even my children, every single response was, why not? What can you, there's nothing to lose. You can only learn. So it's, it's not about jumping in and, and guarantee of any win. It's jumping in and look at all the lessons that you can learn along the way. Uh, um, and, and the people that you can reconnect with. And, and I couldn't argue with that. And I, I thought, well, the real reason I was saying no is because I was terrified of putting my name on a ballot. Um, and I, I had made a, a promise to myself um, that I wouldn't be making decisions based on fear. And I realized that my answer of no was based in fear. So I just thought, well, okay, I'll say yes. And God help me, he better have a plan because I certainly didn't. <laughs> wow, that's that's such an amazing story. Looking at you, didn't even plan to you don't want to be, and uh, sometimes we tend to, um, like like you said, the answer we are giving to us, we are giving we are giving strong reason reason why you shouldn't be selected right to run for the for the position. But that is bringing out the opposite effect. Where to them, it's like giving you the best reason why you should be the one. To <laughs> So good for the position. That's that's so good. That's so good and inspiring to to learn that sometimes it's not about what we want, but if if that is what it's supposed to be, and 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 wow, that's that's an incredible story. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. So my next question would be, um, what what keeps you going despite the challenges? And now now you're in the role, yeah, right? And this is your second time, I believe. And now you're uh, you're holding a ministerial appointment, which is 
making making the work a little bit more more tedious for you. So what keeps you going despite the, the challenges that are that, that, that are coming with the with the different roles? Right. And and that's a that's a very interesting and good question, especially to be asking during a pandemic. Nobody planned for this for sure. <laughs> um, and and, it, it, and there has been definitely a lot more challenges and struggles um, leading through a, a pandemic because there is no playbook for this. So you're doing your best to learn uh, what other jurisdictions maybe who have sort of gone through it before us uh, have decided and what's the best outcomes. And there are no perfect answers and you do the best that you can with the information that you have. Um, and I think that, that what keeps me going is, is no different from when I began in politics is um, I feel that I have something to offer that will be of benefit to the community I represent. Uh, not that everyone will agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, to some extent, you have to accept that. Yeah. Um, and I've always said that as long as I feel I still have something to offer that benefits others, then I'll continue to make myself available for this particular role. And if at any point I feel that my contributions are not helpful uh, to the wider community, uh, I will know that my time is up. Wow, that's that's amazing, and and you you've done incredible work in the in the community in the in the province, and and I can see that it's, it's all over the place, and with the helping with the conservation of the of the forest and and everything. I saw the the, the western project that that is coming up soon. I haven't gotten I haven't read the details into it, but I saw the the. Um, the notes and it of it on your on your IG, and I think that the the province and under your under your leadership, you're doing a lot of things to improve the community, to improve the the environment, to make sure that these things that we we are seeing, some of the things that we are seeing now, they are much better in the future, and also to improve because environmental. We talk about environmental um, disaster. We talk about um, global warming, and to some people, it seems like it's not. It's not it's not a reality. But when, when I look at two, three days ago, I look at outside in December, and this is Winnipeg, and I see that it's like middle of the summer. I know that yes, the, the environment is responding to what we are doing. So and you're taking um, much action to 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 make sure that the effect is being reduced. So thank you so much for that and also for sharing, sharing those. Um, my, next, my next question would be um, sort of if if there is I mean if there is any other goal or ambition that you want to uh, you want to pursue or you want to what's your next goal basically? Um, I, I think even when I look back at my own particular journey and path to where I am at today, I've never been an ambitious person. So I've never really set goals for more or above or next. I've always been somebody who has dealt with the here and now. Um, but I've learned to be a lot more open to opportunities um, or um, uh, options um, that, that maybe my skill set can help enhance or benefit others. So having said that, I don't have necessarily a, a vision or, or projection of where I'm going to be in the next, you know, four to eight years to 10 years. Um, but I, I do trust that, that whatever opportunities arise, if, if it's um, an opportunity to help benefit others, um, I hope I'll be in the right mindset to, to take on those opportunities. But I will say that uh, I've, I've learned to really appreciate um, the, the uh, thought of one day um, being back solely focused on being a mom and maybe one day a grandma. <laughs> that's so good that's so good so you, well there, there's so many levels of inspiration with the with, with what you said and one is um not not necessarily focusing on the future but taking it one day one day at a time and also learning to appreciate what 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 you have now and another another thing i learned is is the, is the fact that you talk about being being a mom and that's something that you're super proud of. And 
You want to be a grandma, which is really good. I love my, <laughs> I love my, I love my grandma and my parents. I don't, I don't play, I don't play with them, and they don't. That if you want to cause trouble for my mom, just disturb a child also. So it's it's very, it's something that is very precious to to us. Family is forces. When you're able to um, handle your family, then you can handle another person's family because the even the offices that we are running, we are taking care of other family, families, right? And it is how well we are able to respond to our family members that we can translate that into other families. And you, you keep that as, as a priority, which is, which is something really, um, really inspiring to, to, to myself. And I, I believe it will be inspiring to others too, that um, no matter what, where you find yourself, do not neglect the importance of your family. The family is, is key and everything you do. Do. So thanks for sharing that. And um, well, and the 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 so the, the next question will be hmm. okay. I think I think I'm mostly done. Mostly done in terms in terms of my my questions. Talk about the 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 vision. You talk about the inspiration. Talk about next goal. So, what if you have some? What to be your thoughts to people? What if you have advice to people? During this time, people that are either going for challenges or people that are um, going to like basically what to be your advice for them. So, what's my advice to people who are facing some difficulties? Is that what the question? Sorry, you broke up a little bit on that question. Yeah, either facing difficulties or general to people that are living in this challenging time. Maybe also to to moms, um, to moms coming up to um, what, future dads. I went up to you, so I could be, could be from any language. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that um, one of the areas that, that maybe doesn't get a lot of, of, of focus nowadays are that, that uh, the mothers who are home with small, small children, previous to the restrictions, were able to get together with other families for support. Um, and the isolation is really, really difficult um, because you're not getting a heck of a lot of adult interaction. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what those groups were, were for. And it certainly was a life for, for myself when I had really young toddlers and children. Um, and I think that they're doing an amazing job, um, even with the stress and the difficulties of, of restrictions. And uh, it's going to be a a relatively short time this is temporary but it's it's a very tough temporary and i think that goes for a lot of people people who are living alone um, are facing challenges that, that those who are in families don't always empathize with or or appreciate mm -hmm. and uh and i think that as difficult as the restrictions have been the majority of people have really risen to the challenge um, and and follow those restrictions so that we can get to a point where we can go back to some sort of normalcy in the near future. Awesome. But having said that, um, I really want to encourage people who are struggling that um, there is help out there and, and don't wait until you feel that you can't cope anymore. Um, there are therapy lines that you can uh, reach out to uh, at uh, the www.mantopa.ca uh, website or the government website that um, there are individual therapists that, that will speak with you. And, and I struggled too with, with postpartum depression and, and I was able to seek help and receive it. And I think that what we're seeing through this pandemic and the restrictions is a lot more people uh, struggling with anxieties. Um, whether that's based on isolation or the extra stress of their workload. Um, and it's very important that when you're, when you're struggling like that, that you reach out for, for help. Um, and again, we're, we're here to help. Um, there is going to be a light at the end of this very dark time. And, and I look forward to us all supporting each other on the uh, other side of this through the healing process. Thank you very much for for, for those um, care for the last word that there, there is there is light at the end of the tunnel that's usually said and this this will not last forever at some point but which it, it, it will be very soon we we'll get back to some sort of normal life where people can um, talk talk with other people but if anybody is in need of any form of any form of um, assistance it's, it's time for them to speak up early because the earlier you speak up the easier um, it, it will be 
So if anyone is having any challenge, maybe that mental health or um, anxiety or any form of um, need that they have, um, I encourage them to, to speak up right, as soon as possible so that they will reach out for the necessary resources to assist. And thank you very much, the Honorable, for taking time even to uh, to join this interview and for your gracious time for the awesome things that you're doing, even for the province, for the constituency. I really appreciate you uh, for everything you're doing and for taking that time to meet me. Maybe we get to talk, talk sometime later, but yeah, that's mostly it for this interview. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. have a great time. Okay, have a good day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.